Have you ever paused to consider that high above, between the stratosphere and legend, there exists a machine capable of upsetting the geopolitical balance with nothing more than the shadow of its wing? That technological specter is the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, a dark triangle whose echo on enemy radars is quieter than that of a flock of seagulls. Its price exceeds 2 billion 100 million US dollars per unit. Yet beyond the figure, what astonishes is the symphony of science, engineering, and logistics that makes it possible. The story did not begin in the Cold War, but in the visionary mind of John Jack Northrup during the 1940s. His dream was a pure flying wing, no prominent fuselage nor vertical stabilizers. That concept briefly crystallized in the YB-49 prototype, whose tests revealed promising aerodynamic performance, but collided with the era's technological limits. Materials too heavy, analog controls unable to tame the instability, and still rudimentary radar. Decades later, with nuclear tension mounting, the Department of Defense revived that old idea under the Advanced Technology Bomber Program. Now, industry had carbon fiber composites, digital computers, and new control algorithms. Northrop, already confined to a wheelchair, witnessed the first sketches of his reincarnated creation before passing away in 1981. His design had finally found the technology it needed to fly. In Northrop Grumman's immaculate rooms, lit by 4K monitors and held at 20 degrees Celsius to protect the servers, aerospace engineers ran millions of CFD simulations. After countless iterations, the definitive geometry emerged. A 52-meter swept wing with no tail, each curve a delicate compromise between lift, stability, and low radar reflectivity. They even modeled rivets and access panels to ensure that surface turbulence would not betray the aircraft's position. Once the digital design is signed off, the gigabytes of blueprints fly encrypted to the gigantic hangar in Palmdale, a facility so pristine that dust is controlled with the same obsession as in an intensive care unit. There, aerospace-grade titanium ingots are melted in vacuum arc furnaces and go through five-axis machining centers until they become ribs and spars capable of withstanding 55,000 pounds per square inch without flinching. Meanwhile, on the adjacent line, glove technicians lay down micrometer-thin carbon graphite sheets on invar molds and send them into 8-meter diameter autoclaves, where 180 degrees Celsius and 900 kilopascals bond each layer and orient its fibers to absorb different radar bands. Everything is then inspected by high-energy X-rays, phased array ultrasonics, and infrared thermography a tripod of scrutiny that detects voids smaller than a grain of sand and mercilessly rejects any part with even the tiniest bubble, because in the wing of a ghost there is no room for imperfection. On the main assembly line, a climate-controlled hangar where temperature fluctuates by only one degree Celsius to prevent expansion, the B-2 structure hangs from silent overhead cranes and rests on turntables that orient it on any axis. In this way, a battery of six-axis robotic arms, guided by laser beams and synchronized via a real-time MES system, installs thousands of expandable titanium bolts along with elastomeric sealants that isolate electrical currents. Each torque is monitored by load cells recording torque and elongation, sending data to a digital twin that adjusts the process if deviations of thousandths of a millimeter are detected. After fastening, structured light optical scanners create a high-density point cloud that overlays the original 3D model. If accumulated error exceeds 0.25 millimeters, the line stops, and a team of metrologists validates the area with portable laser gauges before releasing the next cycle. Acoustic sensors listen for the characteristic click confirming proper bolt expansion, while infrared thermography devices monitor the sealant's curing temperature to prevent microcracks. This closed-loop verification, combining machine vision, sound analysis, and statistical control, ensures the flying wing leaves the station with such geometric precision that its aerodynamic surfaces require no rework before receiving the stealth coating in the next phase. In a hermetic black chamber, technicians clad in white suits apply layers of classified radar-absorbent material. The compound is sprayed in two tenth-millimeter films, curing for hours to avoid internal stresses. After each coat, a hyperspectral scanner checks thickness point by point. Excess mass could increase weight. Insufficient coverage would compromise invisibility. Finally, a matte graphite gray paint completes the low observable signature in visible and infrared light. During systems integration, four General Electric F-118 GE-100 turbofans, each producing 17,000 pounds of thrust, slide into S-ducts that cool and mix exhaust gases to soften the thermal footprint. 
At the same time, a quadruple redundant fly-by-wire system, four computers performing the same calculations and discarding any that disagree, keeps the flying wing's natural instability in check. The cockpit, with two 0-0 ejection seats, is surrounded by touchscreens displaying synthetic maps, weather, and alerts, while helmet-mounted displays project data directly onto the horizon, so pilots need not look down. Behind the scenes, twisted pair wiring and tempest-shielded boxes guard all electronics against electromagnetic pulses, ensuring the ghost remains a ghost even in the midst of a storm. The Spirit's belly carries 18,144 kilograms of munitions. From conventional JDAMs to AGM-158 JASM ER cruise missiles and B-6112 nuclear warheads. The bomb bay doors open and close in less than three seconds thanks to silenced hydraulic actuators, preserving the radar signature. With a range that nears 11,100 kilometers unrefueled and effectively infinite when refueled via hose and drogue, the B-2 cruises at 900 kilometers per hour a speed fine-tuned to squeeze every drop of fuel while flying at 15,000 meters above the hum of most anti-aircraft guns. Guided by a triad of military GPS, terrain follow radar, and a laser precision inertial navigation platform, drift under 50 meters even after crossing an ocean. This metallic phantom combines intercontinental reach, aerodynamic efficiency, and cutting-edge navigation to appear where least expected and vanish without a trace. Before its first flight, the aircraft enters an anechoic chamber simulating VHF to KU band radars. Its reflected signature must equal that of a tennis ball. Then it moves to an engine test stand for uninterrupted eight-hour runs, with simulated lightning strikes and EMP pulses. The landing gear endures thousands of cycles on an instrumented track measuring dynamic loads for each simulated touchdown. Materials arrive via a certified global supply chain, Epoxy resin crosses the continental U.S. in refrigerated trucks to prevent polymerization. Titanium travels in padded rail cars to avoid microcracks from vibration. Each lot is screened by mass spectrometry for contaminants at parts per billion levels. Microchannels etched into the outer skin circulate coolant to dissipate hotspots, generated by friction and nozzle proximity, reducing the infrared signature. This active skin cooling later inspired medical cooling devices for laser surgeries. Becoming a B-2 pilot requires three years of training. It begins in VR simulators recreating stratospheric gusts and nocturnal refuelings. Next come hours in the T-38 Talon to perfect blind flying maneuvers. Only then do pilots access a twin-seat B-2 trainer, where each flight lasts between 10 and 16 hours. After every mission, the B-2 glides into a hermetically sealed, climate-controlled hangar to begin an almost 30-hour protocol. At 35% humidity, technicians inspect the surface with grazing lights and microfiber gloves, performing 500 visual and tactile checks for scratches or delaminations. Simultaneously, automated benches run 40 tests on hydraulics, actuators, wiring, and power supplies, logging anomalies in a predictive maintenance platform. Then, 35 degrees Celsius jets of demineralized water and neutral detergent wash away insects and debris without harming the radar absorbent coating. Hail damage repairs are completed in under 90 minutes with polymer graphite filler cured by infrared lamps. Phased array ultrasonic scanners examine titanium ribs and spars for fatigue. And once a year, the aircraft is stripped of all paint, shot blasted in a gentle tumbling chamber and autoclave to receive a fresh ram coating before returning to its characteristic graphite gray finish, ready for another operational cycle with the radar signature of a small bird. With only 20 operational units and an outright export ban, the B-2 Spirit is a strategic asset whose very existence shapes military diplomacy. This stealth bomber is reserved for the highest value targets, command centers, missile silos, cutting edge air defenses. Where precision and covert penetration are decisive, its intercontinental reach combined with the ability to traverse A-2 slash AD zones undetected, gives the United States the power to project force globally without deploying large contingents. In crisis scenarios, planners assume at least one B-2 can be overhead anywhere on the planet in under a day, shifting adversaries' reaction time calculations and defensive postures. Even when it never leaves its Missouri base, its role in war games and official communiques serves as a reminder that certain strategic objectives remain vulnerable. Thus, the B-2 operates not only as an attack platform, but as a psychological and political deterrent a card that can be hidden or subtly revealed to influence negotiations, realign alliances, and ultimately strengthen America's position in the balance of power. 
The program spawned centers of excellence in composites, friction stir welding, and vibration management that today design wind turbines and maglev trains. Route optimization algorithms, originally created to help the Spirit avoid radar, are now used by merchant ships and civilian drones to cut fuel consumption and reduce piracy risk. The B2's autonomous power systems, microgrids, lithium sulfur batteries, and intelligent converters have inspired hospitals and data centers that cannot tolerate a one-second outage. From Kosovo to Syria, the B2 has demonstrated its ability to strike with surgical precision and depart unscathed. ASA radar upgrades, satellite links, and new mission software keep it relevant even as its successor, the B-21 Raider, prepares to take the baton. When the Spirit slowly departs its hangar and rolls down Whiteman's runway, it sets in motion an extraordinary synthesis of aerodynamic principles, material science, and computational power that spans three eras. Jack Northrup's flying wing intuition from the 1940s, the Cold War's innovation race, and 21st century virtual design tools. Beneath its graphite gray skin lie titanium ribs able to withstand colossal pressures, carbon graphite panels oriented layer by layer to devour radar waves, and an electronic nervous system executing millions of operations per second to stabilize a geometry that, without digital assistance, would be all but unmanageable. The result is a machine that travels beyond 11,000 kilometers non-stop, cruises at 15,000 meters, where the atmosphere barely brushes its skin, and maintains a radar signature comparable to that of a small bird. Its existence proves that engineering does not advance in straight lines. It leaps boldly when imagination, strategic necessity, and technology converge at precisely the right moment. Knowing the journey that transforms ingots, fibers, and lines of code into a stealth bomber reminds us that every technical breakthrough is, ultimately, a declaration of what human creativity can achieve when ambition meets rigor.